How's it going everybody? In today's video, I wanted to show you a better way to do Ajax in WordPress. I've been doing it the same way for a long time, so this new method was quite a surprise and a pleasant one at that. So if you are new here, make sure to subscribe to the channel and ring the bell to make sure you get notified of my weekly WordPress tutorials. All right, let's jump into it. All right, so normally the way that I would go about doing Ajax calls in WordPress would look a little something like this. We have an action for logged in and logged out users, and it's an action prefixed with WP underscore Ajax underscore the thing that we're calling. And then it has a function, and then we, when we call that function, we usually return some JSON or something like that. The problem, problem with an air quotes with that, is that it uses uh, admin dash Ajax.php. And most caching systems are going to avoid anything that's inside of the admin screen. So it's going to check for like is admin, and if it if it is, it's not going to do anything. And with good reason, right? We don't want to be uh, caching admin pages or anything like that. So what this method is is it's create it will will create a URL, and um, most caching systems will pick up that URL and then cache the contents of that page. And so what we need to do is we need to do um, use WordPress's rewrite system to create that URL. So it's going to look something a little bit like this. Uh, we have uh, an action on a knit and we're running a function and we're adding a rewrite tag and a rewrite rule. Uh, the rewrite tag is taking in um, a variable here and we're starting with percent and ending with percent and giving it kind of its ID. Uh, and then we're giving it a regular expression that is um, saying what's allowed inside of that. And then in our rule, we're essentially picking it up. So we are arbitrarily creating this. This could be, you know, slash whatever, slash we want. But in this case, it makes a lot more sense in my brain if we have something like this, where it's Ajax API slash users, and it's going to say that it's going to accept a number zero through nine. Um, and then we are going to be picking up that URL uh, or that uh, rewrite tag that we created here, and we're going to be creating it here as well. Um, and then lastly, it, we give it a priority, which is top in this case. Um, but then that kind of connects those two dots. We can now visit this URL and then pass it a number here. And then we can do something with that. Well, how would we do anything with that? So what we need to do is since we will be visiting this URL with an Ajax call through JavaScript, we need to have an action on template redirect in WordPress. This is another um, action in the lifecycle that's very early very soon after init. So um, on template redirect, when we visit a page, we want to check to see if that user ID is inside of the URL. Um, and so if it's inside of the URL, then we can kind of do whatever we want with that. So this is kind of where we would do all of our business logic. So in this case, we want to get a user and return some data about him. So all we're gonna do is, just to speed things up, is we have a user, we're getting it by the ID, we are getting that ID from the URL, and then we're sending back a JSON success with the first name, last name, and email of the user. So once we have this, we should now be able to visit this page, slash ajax slash api slash user slash user ID, and it, we should get back a JSON object with um, this information in here. Uh, however, we need to, since we are creating a new URL in WordPress, we need to go into our admin screen and flush the rewrite rules. And that's a, there's a simple way of doing this, something I always forget when I'm doing it like this, is you just go into settings, permalinks, and you just click save changes. So let's give this a try real quick. So if we go to slash Ajax slash API slash users slash one, since this is a, a uh, you know, we're grabbing the first user, 
we now get success is true and then we have our data object. So what would this look like with some JavaScript just to kind of round it all out? Um, if we, you know, let's just open up my footer here. Footer.php, um, we can have a script tag and we're just going to have a button. And so we have a button with an ID of get user. We're having an async await function where we're fetching out um, slash Ajax API slash user slash one. We're awaiting the response and we are console logging the JSON that we get. And we are doing that when we click the button. So we're getting the document or getting the button. We're waiting for a click and then we are requesting that user. So when we click the button, we should get a console log with some JSON in it. So we're going to Google Chrome. We're going to the bottom of the page. Click me for a user. Let's open up dev tools. Let's zoom in quite a bit and let's click uh, me for a user. We get some JSON success is true. And we have all the data that we would be looking for. So again, this is something that uh, it's not going to work. It's not going to be the best for every single scenario that exists. I'm just saying that this is an alternative way of doing it, especially if you're looking to be able to cache this and you're using a system that's caching URLs. So that URL could now be cached and we can be getting this data um, a lot faster than we could before. So this is kind of a hot little tip. Uh, take it for what you will. Uh, let me know down in the comments if this is something that you would use, if you think it's a good idea, if you think it's a bad idea, you know, I want to hear from you. Leave a like on the video if you did, and um, I appreciate the support, guys, and I will see you in the next one.